Yo, you ever try passing parameters to store procedures in Power BI and Direct Query storage mode and you hit a, a brick wall? Yeah, <laughs> me too. But what if I told you there's a cleaner, faster way, no hacks, no workarounds? In this video, I'll show you how to use a table value function in SQL Server. And guess what? You can unlock some real time insights using your slicers in Power BI. All right, so let's ditch the exec errors and do it the right way. So you know what I like to do? Enough of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. If you take a look at this report, I have two tables that I've created right here. And they just click enter data and I type some data in. One contains year and one contains month number. They correspond to the parameters of the store procedure. And so if we go over to Management Studio, you could see the store procedure. And so it takes two parameters and it just returns a table. OK, so I'm going to go back to the desktop. I'm going to go into transform. And what I've done is I've created a query and let's go look at the query that accepts the store procedure. So it is going to execute the store procedure. This is the first parameter. It's going to come from a value. And then this is the second parameter. It's going to come from a value. And you can see these are just parameters that I've created. So let me show you. So I created these two parameters that are prefixed with PRM. And so I created these two parameters. You can see one has 2013 and one has month one. If I change this to month two, that updates the data. See month two. If I go back and change it to month three, you'll see it changes the data. This is dynamically. So it changes the data to month three. And all these queries are actually being executed over on my server. And so if you go take a peek, you can see 2013 month three, you can see 2013 month three, you can see all the executions of the store procedure. And how I did that in Management Studio, big shout out to Bob Ward, because Bob actually showed me this. What I did was I, on the database, I connected in Management Studio and you can see the event profile and I right clicked on T-SQL and I just said launch session. So anything that's happening, you know, any of of those T SQL queries that are being sent through, I can see in my batch starting event. And so I was excited. So I click close and apply and you can see, right, I got this little error out the gate, but I ignored it. I'm like, no, my query works. So I did that and got that away. That should have been an indication. And this is another indication that it didn't work, but my parameters, my query in direct query mode in Power Query worked. And so before I show you how I got this error, let's delete that. So I have these two parameters and what I want to do, I want to dynamically pass the values of the slicers to the parameters in Power Query. And so what I did was here, I bound those. So I did some parameter binding. And so if I collapse this and just get a little real estate, you can see my main store procedure call is in direct query mode. And that's denoted by this blue line. And so if I choose months and choose month number and you see my little indicator there and let's collapse formatting and you can see I bound that column to the parameter month and I did the exact same thing for year. OK. And now when I go over to my report, I got really excited and it was for no reason at all. Right. It was for no reason. I start formatting and shaping up my beautiful report. And then I went over to my sales table, which is in direct query mode, executing that store procedure. And the first one I added was calendar year because I wanted to make sure it corresponded and you can see it fail. And so if I do see details, you can see this is that error that popped up and I should have paid attention to this error and saying, hey, exec incorrect syntax. Fortunately, I had this running so I can go do a little investigation. And so I saw this and I was like, select star from you can't. That's not proper. That's not good. SQL. That doesn't work. Let me try it again. Let's see. Let's switch up the parameter. And I did this and I'm like, all right. And then I went back to management studio. There we go. And so you can see here's the exact statement that I was looking for. And so it's saying select top 501. I'm like, OK, that's not going to work. And I was thinking, how can I hack this out? I'm like, I got an idea. I can use a table value function. So there's a couple of types of table value functions in SQL Server. There's a multi line. I'm just going to use a simple one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go over to a new query window. I'm going to paste this in. And then let me show you how easy it is to convert this proc into a function. So the first thing I did was replace proc with function. Then I want to give it a different name, right? And then you got to put your parameters in parentheses, tab them out. And then I'm going to say returns table. And then directly inside the as you put return. And that's pretty much it. So let's do control R and get some real estate back. And this creates my function. OK, and it's just going to return a simple table. Functions can get complicated, just like store procedure can, especially if you do a multi line table value function. I'm just doing a simple, simple table value function that returns a table. And then I went back to Power BI desktop and I set it up the exact same way. OK, so I have my functions. And if you go 
into transform data. You can see I have my parameters and I have my tables that I did enter data from. Now all I need to do is get a function call. And so I'm going to go to new SQL server. And what you would do with the store procedure in direct query mode, you would put the store procedure right here. So you say exact store procedure name. Well, it's a little different with table value functions in direct query mode. I'm not going to enter anything down here and I click OK because it returns a table. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see your functions, right? And I can choose this. One thing that I wish they would let me do is enter my parameters right here, but that's OK. So I can enter some values 2013 and I'm going to put two right? and I'm going to click OK. And when I click OK, there is my data and I'm going to move this down to my other queries because it's not a parameter and it doesn't get any data back. But let's go and switch my values. So I'm going to go advance. It put no for my parameters. Not sure why that happened, but all I need to do is say PRM year, replace those parameter values, PRM underscore month. So these are my parameter values. So I click done and then you can see my data 2014 month one. If I switch it, I'm going to go to and then if I go over here, you can see my data month two, right? So now I'm dynamically passing those values in and I'm really excited. But am I going to get the same error that I got with my store procedure? Let's find out. So we're going to click close and apply. OK, it's in there's potential risk. That's because my table value function is in direct query and my other two tables are in import. But I say, OK, churn, 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 churn. OK, I didn't get an error. Let's go over to my model view. My function is there. It's in direct query mode. And these two are there in import mode. Now let's bind them. Let's bind like we did before with the other one. Let's go here. We're going to bind this to month. Um, yep, that's OK. And then we're going to bind this one to year. I'm going to go here on my semantic model, expand general, and I want to discourage implicit measures. All right. And then I'm going to go back over here. So everything's working so far. And I was excited. And then I'm going to add my table. And now drum roll, please. And then what we're going to do is say year. There's 2013. Let's choose month number. There's month number two. Let's choose order date. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's working. Sales amount. Now, if I switch to 2014, then we switch 2014. If I choose month three, month three, right? Now let's go back to management studio and let's go look and see what was coming through on our query. And you can see, right? It's saying select top and you can see my select and right in there, you should see towards the end. If you take a look, I wish I could give, give you more, but if you take a look, you can see towards the end in there somewhere is my table value function. You can see it down there. I don't want to move because it'll remove the two tip, but you can see function, get product, and it's passing those values in. So now, now, if you want to, if you want to use parameter binding with your slicers and you want to have dynamic parameters being passed from your slices into SQL Server so you can return just the data you need, you could do it with table value functions. All right. What do you think? Any questions, comments about this? Have you solved this a different way? I'd love to know. You know what to do. Post it in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about Fabric or Power BI or SQL databases, all the workloads in Fabric, it's probably a video flying above my head. And as always, for Martha, Adam, this guy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.